What's up, YouTube? It's the Action Figure Grader coming back to you with another inflation update. I know that most of you probably don't care about this stuff, so I'll try to keep this video brief, but inflation numbers just got released this morning, and uh, I wanted to share those with you and, you know, again, tie this back to the collectibles market and why we're seeing such high prices. And a lot of the data that came out today supports what I've been saying in past videos that inflation is not going to be something that's temporary. It's not going to be transitory as we get back to normal uh, in the economy. And I think all those numbers that come, came out today support that belief. And people are finally starting to recognize that uh, pr high prices are here for a while now. Uh, as, as you can see here, this just got released about 25 minutes ago, but inflation climbed higher than expected in June as the consumer price index rose 5.4%. Uh, consumer prices were up 5.4% in June from a year earlier, the biggest gain since August of 2008. That is a big number. And uh, excluding food and energy, which, uh, as I've mentioned, are the two most volatile measures, it still increased 4.5%, which is the largest move since September of 1991. That is a massive number. Now, one of the more interesting aspects of uh, what happened last year with um, you know the pandemic was that Used car and truck sales represented about one third of the total increase in inflation. And why is that? Well, the reason is, is that all the used car, or excuse me, all the rental car companies like Budget and Hertz, during the pandemic last year, they all sold off their inventory because our country was in a lockdown. So those co companies were exposed with a lot of used cars so they dumped them all because they they pictured uh, at the time that this lockdown was going to be here for a while. People were not going to be traveling that much. So uh, and they were right about that. You know, it lasted, you know, let's call it three to six months where where there was not a lot of travel and a lot of not a lot of demand for used car or for rental cars. So those used cars uh, were just dumped on the market. And the, the large percentage of the used car market uh, in the U.S. comes from the rental companies. So now that we're back out of lockdown, uh, you know, people are traveling again, and uh, whether it's for vacations or, or for business travel. And so those companies that sold off all their inventory last year, that are now holding on to that inventory. There's not the, the normal cycle of uh, use, use those vehicles for rentals, sell them, get more, more vehicles that are newer uh, for, for new rental vehicles. So they're sitting on, those, on that inventory and you know, keeping keeping that that fleet of used cars in their rental rental uh, inventory. So, as a result, us as consumers who want to buy used cars, there's not a lot of options out there. Uh, my family just bought a, a used vehicle, and uh, we we had our target set on this certain model of SUV. And you know, I live in Nashville, where there is about a little over two million people in my metropolitan statistical area. And in that large of a city, we only found two vehicles, two, that matched our criteria, rough, rough criteria. And it was very broad criteria. So it just shows you that, that the, the used car market is really tight right now. And as a result, with, when supply is down, price is going to go up with demand. So um, a couple of other interesting points is that, um, you know, the stock market futures, uh, you know, which predicts what the market's going to do, they fell, as you'd expect. Government bond yields are, are fairly mixed, though. So... You know, the, the, no one, when, the, when the yields are mixed, it means that the market doesn't know what to make of this data. And it still seems like the market is somewhat reactive rather than uh, kind of predictive when it comes to this inflation number. And uh, Wells Fargo's uh, senior economist, this said, this, this really shows that inflation pressures remain more acute than appreciated and are going to be with us for the longer period. For a longer period and that kind of goes against what the federal reserve has been largely saying in their meeting minutes that they think uh, inflation is still kind of transitory but i think more and more people are waking up to the concept that uh, inflation numbers are going to be here for a while uh, another other important point as, is as it relates to uh, uh, you know consumers kind of buying power uh, here it is right here. A separate report from the Labor Department's Bureau of Labor Statistics noted that the big monthly hike in consumer prices translated into negative real wages for workers. And what does that mean? That means that for every dollar that you're making as a worker, 
it's you're you're getting less and less purchase power because of these high inflation numbers. And so for 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 us as normal people who are not like ultra wealthy, that means that uh, you know we got to put more and more of our hard earned money towards everyday living expenses, be it fuel or uh, house housing costs or groceries, things like that. But how does that translate into the collectibles market? Well, the reason we're starting to see even more and more high prices, like I just showed in my video earlier this morning, where items that I pictured going for maybe a couple of thousand dollars are selling for $5,000, like the 12-inch Boba Fett that was in that, that uh, recently completed auction. Well, those who do not have to, to worry about their living expenses, the ultra-wealthy, they can throw more and more money at collectibles, at hard-earned assets to park their excess cash into uh, into collectibles, and that's what's driving a lot of the high-end collectibles prices. Uh, you know, we just saw some some crazy prices in my video yesterday for some auctions on graded video games of all things that are already at three, four, five thousand uh, dollars. There's been a couple of videos out there on YouTube showing that graded uh, a graded N64 Super Mario World game just sold for the highest price ever of 1.5 million or, or or so. So, uh, you know, again, you, you got to take all these inflation numbers and, and apply it to your own personal situation. But what I see is that inflation is here to stay. It's not going anywhere unless we start seeing some dramatic uh, changes by the Federal Reserve as it relates to interest rates uh, to try and slow down some of this, uh, you know, frothy economy. And it's going to translate into continued high collectibles prices. That's my prediction. So. Anyway, that's just a real quick video. I wanted to show you kind of the latest inflation numbers because whether you like it or not, these inflation numbers have an effect on the collectibles market. And certainly consumer demand is still always going to be the, the number one driver for collectibles. People are demanding more and more collectibles right now. But, uh, you know, a, a side corollary of this inflation that we're seeing is, is it's also impacting uh, collectibles prices. And uh, that's all this is really showing. Anyway, I just wanted to do a quick video with the latest inflation news. I hope that you uh, enjoyed this video. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Uh, please consider subscribing. Uh, please comment and, and like this video if, if you enjoyed it. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll be back soon.